we are coming towards the last part of the kinematics that is motion in straight line the last part is related to the relative velocity so in relative velocity there are certain important features which we have to recognize so relative velocity means that basically the velocity of one body with respect to another body or the velocity of other body with respect to first body so when we use the term relative velocity we are much concerned with whether the velocities are to be added or velocities are to be subtracted that depends upon the direction of motion of body so normally rule is that when two trains move parallel to each other in the same direction then relative velocity will be calculated by taking the difference of two velocities but when the trains are moving in the opposite direction their distance will increase from a certain point and the relative velocity will be addition of two velocities so these facts we have to enlarge here in this particular portion so there is nothing in absolute rest or in absolute motion we can have an example like for example there is a book lying on the table so that will be in the state of rest with respect to the inner walls of the room or with respect to table but the same book will be in the state of motion with respect to outer space similarly motion is combined property of object under study and the observer so either object and observer both are in motion or sometimes object is stationary and observer is moving or sometimes observer is moving and object is stationary so out of the two one can be stationary and other can be moving or both the bodies object and observer both will be moving so accordingly we have to decide what is their relative velocity now for example a book placed on the table in a room is at rest if it is viewed from the room but it is in motion if it is viewed from the moon another frame of reference the moon is moving with respect to book and book with respect to moon so a person on the surface of earth will be stationary with respect to earth but with respect to moon or with respect to space earth is also moving and being earth is moving we will say that the person on the earth is also moving this is not possible that earth is moving and the person is not moving person is a part of earth earth is not a part of person so therefore relative velocity we have to find that is with respect to moon so in this case we will find that the moon is moving with respect to book that is the frame of reference now the second example is a robber enters a train moving at great speed with respect to the ground brings out his pistol and says don't move stand still the passengers stand still the passengers are at rest with respect to robber but are moving with respect to rail track now relative motion means the motion of a body with respect to another body as i have earlier explained now suppose that va and vb are the velocities of two bodies they are the original velocities relative to earth the velocity of b relative to a will be so that will be given by vb a equal to vb minus ve va so why we have taken the difference of the two because we are saying that va and vb are the velocities with respect to earth but va and vb they are moving in the same direction so we have taken the difference so we have taken velocity of b with respect to a that is vb minus va and if we would have been taken vab it would have been va minus vb so on the earth the two bodies are moving in the same direction 
So we have taken the difference. Now, if the two bodies are moving along the same line in the same directions with velocities VA and VB relative to Earth, the velocity of B relative to A will be VBA equal to VB minus VA. Now, in the next concept, like in the B part, you will see that if the two bodies are moving in the opposite direction, then we have added the two velocities. However, if bodies are moving towards or away from each other, as the direction of VA and VB are opposite, velocity of B relative to A will have magnitude VBA. This is equal to VB minus of minus VA and the net result will be VB plus VA and directed towards A or away from B respectively. So, the in nutshell, the total idea is if two bodies with respect to earth are moving in the same direction, the relative velocity of one body with respect to another will be the difference of two velocities. But with respect to earth, if the two bodies are moving in the opposite direction, that is their distances are increasing. So in that case, we will find that the relative velocity of one body with respect to another body, that will be sum of the two velocities. Now, in the another part, the same thing will be explained, which I have just now explained you. In dealing with the motion of two bodies relative to each other, V relative means relative velocity, is the difference of velocities of two bodies if they are moving in the same direction. And is the sum of the two velocities if they are moving in the opposite direction. Now, in the next part, what we are finding if a man can swim relative to water with velocity v and water is flowing relative to ground with velocity vr, again the same concept is to be applied whether the person is moving down, water is moving down the stream or up the stream. So, water is flowing relative to ground with velocity vr. Velocity of man relative to ground is indicated by vm and it will be V is equal to Vm minus Vr. It means that the river and the man, they are flowing in the same direction with respect to ground. Therefore, we have taken the difference. So, Vm, if we wanted to find, if the subject of equation is Vm, then Vm is equal to V plus Vr. So, if the swimming is in the direction of flow, then Vm is equal to V plus V R. So, it means if the two bodies are moving in the same direction with respect to earth, it will be able to take the difference. So, in the earlier case, we have taken V M minus V R and from that we have made the subject of equation as V M. Now, if the swimming is in the direction of flow of water, then in that case we will find V M will be equal to V plus V R and if swimming opposite to the flow of water, Vm will be equal to V minus Vr. In the next part, if the boy is running with relative velocity, V relative, on a train, moving with velocity V. Now, the frame of reference is the moving train. So, V relative to the ground, the velocity of the boy relative to the ground is suppose small v, will be given by V relative is equal to V minus V because the boy is moving in the direction of train with respect to ground. So, we have taken difference of the two velocities and then relative velocity we have taken V is equal to V relative plus V and then the velocity of the boy training uh, or running in the train will be given by V is equal to V relative plus V and Otherwise, V is equal to V relative minus V. When we will take the positive sign, it means that they are moving in opposite direction. And when we are taking in, in the same direction, we will take the difference of the two. So, the velocity of Y will be relative velocity minus the velocity uh, 
uh, with respect to ground. Now suppose a train having length L is crossing a bridge of length L. It means we have to consider the total length that is capital L plus small L with constant speed V. Then what is the time taken by the train to cross the bridge? So to solve this question, we will take the total length and time taken will be total distance divided by total speed. So the solution will be T is equal to adding the two lengths that is small l means that is length l is crossing the bridge train having the length l so small l is the length of the train and l is the length of the bridge so we we have added the two numbers divided by v that will be the time taken by train to cross the bridge it is indicated in the figure l is the length of the bridge now we come towards an example a motorboat covers the distance between the two spots on the river in T1 8 hours and T2 12 hours. So motorboat covers the distance between two points on the river in 8 hours and in 12 hours down the stream and up the stream. Down the stream means in the direction of flow of water. Up the stream means against the flow of water. Calculate the time required for the boat to cover the distance in still water. So we will use the same concept which I have explained just now. That is, let us assume that S is the distance between that two spots. T is the time required for the boat to cover this distance in still water. Also assume that the velocity of the boat, motor boat is in still water is v and the velocity of flow of water is u. So v is the velocity of the motorboat in still water and the velocity of flow of water is taken as u. Then for downward journey, first of all, we calculate s over t1, that is distance over speed. We have added the two numbers v plus u and we have marked as equation number one. So why we have added? The addition is possible when the two things are moving in opposite direction and for upward journey we are finding s over t2 will be v minus u that is the second equation now if we add the two equations one and two that is s over t1 plus s over t2 that will be equal to 2v so from the two equations we got the value of 2v and t is equal to s by v compute the value of v and our net result will become 9.6 hours because the values are given. That is 8 hours and 10 hours. So in the formula, we have computed for T1 and T2 the values 8 hours and 10 hours and the net result will become 9.6 hours. Now in another example, the driver of train traveling at 115 kilometers per hour. So, very important point to notice, the driver of the train traveling at 150 kilometers per hour sees on the same track, 100 meters in front of him, a slow train traveling in the same direction at the rate of 25 kilometers an hour. Find the least retardation that must be applied to the faster train in order to avoid a collision. So, how to estimate it? We will find the solution like this. First of all, the velocity of the faster train with respect to slow train. They are moving in the same direction. So, we have taken the difference. That is 90 kilometers an hour. Now, the distance between the two trains is provided to us. It is 100 meters. If the collision is to be avoided, the relative speed should become zero because if it will stop, the collision will be avoided till distance of 100 meters is covered. Now we use the formula basically V square is equal to U square plus 2 AS. Well, this formula we have taken from the basic formula that is V square minus U square is equal to 2 AS. So we have transferred U square to the other side. So, V square will be equal to U square plus 
2a s now we have 0 is equal to now why we have put 0 because on retardation the final velocity will become 0 so for v we have taken 0 and u square plus 2a s so it is given in the question 90 kilometers per hour so kilometer per hour is converted into meter per second so we have multiplied the number by 5 over 18 and we have taken square of the number so it is u square then plus 2a into 100 and from this equation we will estimate the value of a and a will be estimated with a negative sign negative sign indicates the retardation so retardation is how much retardation is 3.125 meter per second square this we have calculated by putting the values so retardation will be minus a and that is calculated as 3.125 meters per second so basic formula we have used is v square is equal to u square plus 2 as but earlier than that the velocity of the faster train with respect to slow train that we have taken out relatively so they are moving in the same direction so we have taken the difference of the two to get the value 90 kilometers per hour